Hi ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Workman and this is going to be your organic chemistry screencast segment 2. As always, as you begin viewing your screencast, please have some paper available so that you can take notes, writing down key terms, definitions, explanations of those terms, examples of those terms perhaps, and even drawing diagrams or drawing pictures to help with your understanding uh, as you go through this screencast. Please also recall that you are going to be held accountable for the information contained in these screencasts with quick quizzes that we will do in class. So this begins the uh, again the second segment of your organic chemistry screencast and the second segment begins with slide 15. What I'm going to discuss with you in this screencast is how really big molecules, called macromolecules, are built. First of all, let's consider this term. This prefix, macro, is the opposite of micro. You might know that micro means small, such as a, uh, found in the word microscope. A microscope is a scope or a viewing device for looking at really, really small things. So macro, as the opposite, means big. Macromolecules are big molecules. Now that's sort of an oxymoron because all molecules are still relatively small, but these particular molecules are big ones. Macromolecules are formed by a process we call polymerization. Now we are going to discuss one particular type of polymerization reaction. And this diagram here, down in the bottom half of this slide, is showing you how these smaller subunits are being joined together into a unit of two. And then this down here is showing you many of these units linked together. I ask you to take a look at the prefix here, mono. Mono means one. Look at the prefix here. This prefix, di, means two. And down here, poly means many. So let's talk about polymerization. And this is where you want to write down a definition for polymerization. Of course, polymerization is the process whereby big molecules or large compounds are made by joining together smaller subunits. Those subunits or those smaller units are referred to as monomers. Mono again means one and so through polymerization of many monomers we get what we call polymers. What you're seeing here in this process we're going to call uh, this process of polymerization, we're going to call it dehydration synthesis. Just a note here, in some textbooks this process is referred to as condensation synthesis. Dehydration synthesis and condensation synthesis are the same thing, it's just the same process named two different things and it's all in how you look at it. But really what's happening is linkages between these monomers in particular, these are monosaccharides, which is a small sugar unit. Uh, what's happening is a hydroxyl, which is an OH, and a hydrogen are going to be removed from these two subunits, and what happens is water forms. So you can really think of this as either water being removed, or you can think of it as water forming. It doesn't really matter. It's the same thing. It's all in how you look at it. So. Textbook authors that describe this process as dehydration synthesis think about it as water being removed from these subunits. Textbook authors that call this process condensation synthesis think about this process as forming water. Really, the two different things mean the same process. But look here, here's a monosaccharide, here's a monosaccharide linked together. And what's happening, and what you can't really see here, is that there's a carbon here it's now missing one of the bonds that it would like to make. This oxygen, if this hydrogen is removed, 
it is, so to speak, missing a bond that it would like to make. And so what will happen with this gone and with this gone, the OH and the H gone, a chemical bond link between this subunit on the left is made with this subunit on the right. And so what you get is a dimer, as we call it. This one in particular is called a disaccharide. If that's going to happen over and over again, many of these subunits can be linked together in the form of what we call a polysaccharide. This process is mostly done for the purpose of storing energy, although this process also accomplishes uh, the development of physical structure of organisms and, uh, in general, growth. Hydrolysis is the opposite of dehydration synthesis. If you recall from the last slide, if we go from monomers to polymers, that's polymerization. And one of the types of polymerization reactions is dehydration synthesis. Well, hydrolysis is simply the reverse of that. Hydrolysis, it literally means water breaking. And so what happens is water breaks up and an OH and an H get put back into a molecule and the subunits break apart into their smaller pieces from the larger molecules. <clears throat> so you can think of hydrolysis as breaking up water and adding it back into the molecule to make the big molecules get smaller. Dehydration synthesis stores energy, and so the reverse process, it's logical to think that, well, that's going to release energy. There's a whole family of enzymes that our digestive uh, organs make that are referred to as hydrolytic enzymes. And those enzymes help the process of hydrolysis take place, especially when we eat big molecules. When we eat, we eat big molecules, and our bodies need to break them into smaller pieces, and they do so by hydrolysis. When those molecules are broken down into small enough pieces, uh, those molecules are small enough that they can actually be absorbed in our blood. Now, what the next segments of these screencasts will help you understand are the four major groups of organic major, uh, excuse me, uh, four organic macromolecules. And the first group is carbohydrates. You know, you can write down that carbohydrate is the fancy scientific term for sugars. Lipids is the second category. Uh, you can write down that lipids is the fancy term for waxes and oils and fats. And uh, proteins, that's a fancy word for, well, proteins. And nucleic acids, these are molecules that, um, the, uh, that DNA uh, and RNA belong to. And they're important molecules too. So we're going to really focus on learning the structure of these four different types of biomolecules so that we can recognize them and understand what they do and what they're for. So that's it for Screencast 2, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for listening. I hope you're writing down all the key terms. And uh, if you ever have any questions or concerns, please talk to Mr. Workman or Mr. Gales uh, as you have questions to be answered. Thanks.